Welcome everybody. This is a friendship gathering. And uh, I'm just very happy to be here. We try to do this when, when there are fights, when there are events. And I'm just uh, celebrating with the WBC office, Pepe, uh, Ceci and Nancy. We had a great uh, WBC Greenbelt Challenge uh, this past weekend. The amateur boxing tournament for five years in a row. We have one of our champions right here. And uh, he had the lead fight against a boy who came all the way from Argentina. We had a fighter from London. We had a fighter from uh, uh, Mexico, several states from the United States. And uh, that's just a, a very important aspect of the WBC because we created the amateur program just to provide a platform for amateur boxing in Mexico, in the USA, and many other countries. I'm very happy to introduce my friend Tyson Lee, who is the new president of USA Boxing. And uh, I'm proud to, to share that we have had a very good uh, couple of days conversations, and we are happy to uh, start working together for the kids. Uh, nothing else but trying to do something for amateur boxing. Uh, also, Carlos Palomino, my hero from childhood. He's one of the very And uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we have uh, Manny Robles, a great boxing trainer. Yeah. I'm sorry? Chris Zavala was our first amateur champion. Chris Zavala, who was our first mm -hmm. WBC Challenge champion. Mm -hmm. And uh, the pride that we have, we have seen NABF current champion from, from the stable. And uh, just friends, everybody welcome. Thank you so much. And uh, we, we're going to have a nice, nice meal, I think, Uncle Bill. Whatever Uncle Bill is, it's going to be good food. So the idea is we are completely open, open books, open everything. If there are any questions, any suggestions on, on what we can do, uh, we would love to implement new things and whatever uh, can be discussed, we are here to, to discuss and to clarify anything. Questions? Yes. Um, recently, uh, you made the uh, women test uh, so few days a long time ago. A couple of weeks ago, we had Katie Taylor find out Katie for soon. I told you all the results given uh, regarding the testing. And I tried to find out with the New York Commission, the way they did it, and the results. So I was wondering if the WBC helped me. Sure. Let me explain uh, anti doping testing. The WBC implemented in 1975 anti doping mandatory for all world title fights. And that led up to five years ago. That's the same system, only testing fighters after the fight. So we started the Clean Boxing Program, which is a, a series of programs all aimed at anti-doping testing. The most important one is the random out of competition. So if you are a WBC champion or a top 15 ranked, you are in a universe of fighters that can be tested at any time, anywhere in the world. That is uh, a random testing that we fund. So VADA selects on a system which fighters every month they're gonna test. They go knock on the door of the house or the gym and they do a test. Okay, from there you can get either a missed test if they cannot find that fighter or they test him and you can get either negative test, then the case is closed, or an adverse finding. And that's when uh, a process begins. Adverse finding, it means there has been a positive. So we have had a series of positives out of competition, and those have led to canceling fights. Those have led to uh, suspensions, fines, and uh, special programs. There's also contracted uh, testing for a fight. 
The promoter made contract out of competition, so that means those fighters who are fighting each other are tested throughout the process of the fight, and they're tested after the fight as well. VADA has a very strict and the best program of what they test and how they test. It's the Rolls Royce of testing. So you can do it uh, out of competition and also in fight testing with VADA. Uh, there's also the regular fight testing. That is the responsibility of the local boxing commission. And that is the one that we try to work with the commissions to verify which lab and what type of testing takes place but each commission is independent and autonomous. So there's a, a gap there. The women's boxing, we are in the process of enrolling the champion and the top five challengers into the system and the actual testing is gonna begin in September once we have everyone enrolled. Also the last five was not testing. They had testing from the New York Commission, but Every state is different, and many times they, we don't even find out. If there is no positive, then you don't find out anything. But uh, it, it's a matter they do not release for uh, legal matters, I believe. Mauricio, to expand upon what David asked, um, a lot of fighters that are doing the illicit drug using, they do it out of competition. Um, what do you think the game of boxing, and specifically the WBC, can do to expand the drug testing net to catch the cheaters when they don't have a fight sign? That's when a lot of the times the cheating does take place. Well, the, the issue here is we believe you're innocent until you're guilty. What we are trying to spend the money also is in awareness programs. There are fighters who use, uh, you can go to the GNC store and tell them I need a pre-workout or after workout, whatever I'm making. And the guy will put out from the counter and give you uh, supplements. Many of these contain PEDs. Uh, there are trainers, you can perfectly uh, help us elaborate in this. Uh, whatever a fighter, if a trainer tells you, look, take this, take this vitamin, take this supplement, take this, and you will feel better, it will make you perform better, blah, 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 the fighter just takes it. Uh, if you have a cold, you go to the doctor and, or you go to the pharmacy or your mom gives you a medicine. So there's many fighters that do take PEDs or illegal substances without knowing it. Right. But to go to your point, uh, what we need is more testing. The more tests you do, the more you cover. Uh, if boxing commissions, if boxing promoters, if managers uh, would join and spend the money to test, then we would test much more. There's a limit of what we can fund yeah. for testing. Maurice, do you believe in general like with Jarrell Miller, he got a six month suspension, which seems to be really like you From think, who? Uh, from the WBA. And that, that goes into my next question. Do you <laughs> believe that across the board he says it's that bad. the WBA, IBF, WBO, that all the sanctioning bodies should have a uniformity with the Association of Boxing Commissions to say if you test positive once, that you have harsher penalties as a deterrent so that guys who are Let's say thinking about cheating, understand that if I test positive here, it's not just six months, it could be two, three years. You think we need harsher penalties? Look, Jared Miller, and uh, I don't like to point at, at specific <clears throat> cases, but Jared Miller was expelled from the WBC twice. I mean, that was a clear sign. Yeah. He, he was refused to take part in the, the he, clean boxing program. He was ranked, and we reached out to him to enroll in the clean boxing right. program and he did not do it. He had another fight, he was run again, we did all the process, we were led to believe he was gonna enroll, and he did not enroll. Right. So he was expelled, he's not ranked in the WBC. And uh, what but, happened, happened, but he, I cannot respond what the WBA, IBF, or WBO would do. It's only logical uh, that they should look into, I mean, 
But Maurice, it's, my other question is, don't you think all four of the major sanctioning bodies then should work together, at least on this realm of saying, let's have uniformity here. If, if, if they don't want to do VADA, you're not just expelled by the WBC, you're expelled by all four major sanctioning. Do you think that could be worked out or brokered? It, it's, it's a matter to ask them, not me. We, we have seen uh, fighters who have been uh, found positive in the WBC clean boxing program who have been reported and they have fought for their organizations and they took them in and uh, gave them title fights. So that's a matter I cannot respond. It's very easy to ask them. But uh, for example, I know uh, promoters, they contract the PBC, uh, Matchroom, Top Brand, they contract VADA or uh, I don't know if there are other options. I know the British Boxing Board of Control, they do uh, like our program for UK fighters, they have uh, random testing. So if ABC in the US uh, takes upon this topic, we will fully support them and work with them and uh, uh, we can do fundraisers to have, the issue here is very costly. To do uh, clean boxing or testing, you have elements, travel, the collector, who has to, who does the job, and then the shipping and the lab costs. So it's a fixed package. Uh, the travel, it's uh, the one that you don't know because uh, that's a variable, but it's expensive. Um, how many times can a fighter who's enrolled in the clean boxing program miss a scheduled testing before they're dropped from the rankings? It's, it's uh, we, we treat every single case uh, differently, okay. we are analyze and we address it. Uh, there, we have to go back and understand uh, the difference. You are not top 15 yet, yes, and you enrolled yes. in the clean boxing program. Yes. Okay, are you aware that you have to notify VADA if you move somewhere? Like if you're going to go train to Miami. Oh yes, yes, yes. You're aware? Yes, yes. Have you ever left your home or your gym? Whereabouts? Uh, I haven't lived, no. Okay. That, that's a, for example, I was in, in Mexico and Rocky Hernandez, number two contender, he went to visit the office and he told me, oh, I'm leaving tomorrow, I'm gonna train in Los Angeles for my next fight. And I said, have you notified uh, Vada? He said, what? He, he has no idea that he has to notify his change of uh, address. So it's a process. We started this, we have spent so much time, effort and uh, resources, but we're getting somewhere. And it's just a matter of, you can be an ambassador and you teach your friends, you are in the gym, you can help us, and we're reaching out. The awareness program is the key because- I'll make sure I tell Rocky. <laughs> no, I told them I, I help them. I help them uh, feel the whereabouts change. But, we send it to Vada. Well, Maurice, if somebody misses a scheduled Vada testing and is, then is notified, listen, these are the rules. You gotta, you gotta let us know. And it's a persistent problem. Yes. Locating them for okay. testing when they we, need to be tested. As soon as there's is that some, a red flag, I mean, is that if there's a missed test, we address a missed test. We contact them. They have to pay the cost of that uh, lab technician and travel who went and, and had that miss. Uh, the Charlos have to pay a fine. Uh, and uh, it's just a matter of working. You cannot um, point and say he missed a test, he's dirty. Right. We don't want to go, but if there's a, a pattern, then of pattern, course right. we, we take actions. We will take actions. G, J. Leon Love missed three tests mm -hmm. in, in the period of three years, so. Yeah, and he's had a history of testing positive as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice guy, though. <laughs> 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 he failed more than one drug test. <laughs> I didn't know, but he missed uh, three, three tests. Yeah. yeah. In, in, uh,